Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video I'm going to be sharing how I created these three cards using the new kit Sparkle and Shine from Gina K Designs and I'm also going to show you how I created my own foiled card stock so I can do some die cutting. Here's a look at the contents of the Sparkle and Shine card kit. It includes three stamp sets, the festive stencil, the Tag Trio die set, and also three dies to cut out these gorgeous snowflakes, which I'm head over heels in love for. And then it's also including some coordinating cardstock to make your holiday card making easy. Now there are two other products that are being released at the time of this video, and these are holiday limited editions. So first is this glitter cardstock, which is lightweight and great for die cutting. And there are also some slim line envelopes and these colors match the colors of cardstock in the kit. But once again, limited edition. So get them while you can. I have three cards that I want to make with you today and I'll be using the Sparkle and Shine stamp set. It has these three larger images on here with a space in the center for any one of those sentiments. It has an ornament topper and the string for an ornament along with some smaller stamp sets that are very versatile. I'm going to use this snowflake image because I am absolutely in love and obsessed with snowflakes. So I'm lining this up on a piece of layering white cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm going to prep that with an anti-static powder tool. Then I'm going to ink this up really well with the Gina Key Designs embossing ink, stamp that down onto the cardstock, and then after I'm sure I have a clean impression, I'm going to sprinkle on some clear embossing powder. Then I can just tap off any excess back into my container, and after my heat tool is nice and hot, I'm gonna bring it to my cardstock and melt that embossing powder. Now I know this is really hard to see on camera, but trust me, it's there, and you'll be able to see it better once I start applying ink. So the first color I'm starting with is the turquoise sea, and I'm just going to apply a light coating of that using a blending brush. You can use any blending tool that you prefer. Then my second color I'm bringing in is tranquil teal, and I'm starting in the center, and I'm gonna blend that out. I'm not gonna go all the way out. I'm just gonna leave that light hue around the outside edge. And what's really nice about Gina's inks is once they dry, they are absolutely seamless, especially on her layering white cardstock. Then I'm gonna bring in In the Navy, which is a really nice dark blue, and I'm gonna apply that directly into the center. So I kind of have a gradient of color. Normally I go light in the center and work my way out to the darkest, but this time I'm having dark in the middle and working my way out to the lightest. So it'll fade off into white. Then after I'm done ink blending, I'm just going to buff off any of that excess ink. And I had a little smudge because I had blue ink on my finger. So I'm just using a mono sand eraser to rub that off. I chose one of the skinny sentiments off of the Sparkle and Shine stamp set. I'm lining that up onto some red velvet cardstock. And I'm gonna prep this with an anti-static powder tool. And then once again, inking this up with the embossing ink and stamping that down with the door of my Misty tool. And then this time, I'm going to sprinkle on some silver embossing powder from Gina K Designs. So after I melt this with my embossing gun, I'm gonna take this over to my paper trimmer and trim this down into a skinny strip to add to the center of my snowflake. Now you can stamp directly in the center if you choose to, but I really wanted to add a pop of color to that center. I created myself a card base using Gina's heavyweight cardstock, and I just folded that so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm gonna add my ink blended panel to the top of this using a tape runner. And then I'll take some foam squares and trim them down and add them behind my sentiment. So I'm going to be popping up this sentiment in the center. Then to add just a little bit more interest to my card, I'm gonna take some of the Angel Aura rhinestones and I'm gonna add them to all of the ends of my snowflake, just using my embellishment wand and some Gina K Connect glue. And this will finish off my first card. I really love snowflakes, but you could do this to any one of the images on that stamp set and even use the ornament topper to turn this into an ornament. 
My next card that I'll be creating, I'm going to be using a trick that I've seen Gina do recently and I had forgotten all about, which is creating my own foiled cardstock to die cut. So I'm using the three snowflake dies that come in the kit. Each one has a different design. And I'm also going to need my toner paper. This is what we're going to use to create that foiled cardstock. So I also have a piece of the sparkling silver, I believe it's called, foil. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I'm absolutely loving how the snowflake, snowflakes look in this. So I'm using my mini mink machine to do my foiling. I turned my machine on, set it to two, and when the light turns green, it's ready. So I put my foil on top of that toner paper, paper the shiny side up, or the pretty side up. I'm putting this in a piece of parchment paper, and I'm gonna run this through that foiling machine. Then I can peel that back, and I have a piece of paper here, I guess not necessarily cardstock, but I have a thicker piece here that I can die cut my snowflakes from because the foil is super thin. It's hard to cut, let alone die cut anything from. Since I was really enjoying this beautiful foil, I'm gonna do a few more. This is the gold, I think it's called glittering gold. I'll have all of the supplies listed down below, but this one is stunning as well. So I added that to a piece of the toner paper and I also did the red. Now there is a little uh, film that's on top. You just pull that release paper back and I'll do that on each one of these. And just look at that shine. It is so gorgeous. Just imagine these on your Christmas cards this year. Now I should have warned you to grab a pair of sunglasses because it's about to get super bright and shiny. I'm going to take that silver one and I'm lining up the three snowflakes and I'm putting them as close together as I can so I can get another snowflake out of there. And then I just run that through my die cut machine. And when you're poking these out, I'm using the Tim Holtz, we'll call it the pokey tool because I can't remember the exact name, but I'm just poking through to help pop that out of the die. And you want to be really careful because these are fragile and you don't want to risk ripping any of your snowflakes. So I'm just carefully pulling that out and I'll do that for the other two snowflakes. And here is a look at the silver that I had used for the snowflakes. Just look at that sparkle and shine. I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed. I can't stop looking at these cards. Now off screen, I did go ahead and die cut out snowflakes from the red and also the gold, which are just as gorgeous. And I also have some that I did in a, I think it's called a brilliant blue. And those are just, they're all so amazing and beautiful. So for my background, I'm doing one of my most favorite techniques, which is the ink blending on colored cardstock. You've probably seen me do this numerous times, but you just do what you love. And I love doing this and I love creating dramatic backgrounds. So I'm starting with a piece of sea glass cardstock. And I'm going to ink blend on tranquil teal. So I'm ink blending all around the edge of my card, not going all the way into the center. I want to leave that the light blue. So using a blending, blending brush or whatever blending tool you prefer, just lightly going all the way around and it's going to kind of fade off into that light blue. And then I'm going to add a little more drama to my card by bringing in the in the navy ink which is a really nice dark blue so I will blend from the edges in I start off on my glass media mat and blend onto the cardstock and I want to make sure I'm keeping that transition of color and for a little bit more effect I'm bringing in Gina's amalgam ink this is the obsidian and I'm just going around the very very outer edges I don't want to go too far in I really want to have the blue be the focus but I just wanted to add a little more kick to the background then I'm going to flick on some perfect pearls so I put some on my mat and added some water and mix that together and I'm going to flick this on with a paintbrush unfortunately my camera decided to go completely out of focus while I was flicking that on so here is the completed background and this kind of gives the appearance of snow now I can attach my snowflakes. I have two of them lined up on here. Now I could do three because I like to work in threes, but I thought having three glittery snowflakes would be a lot. I, the card is pretty dramatic to begin with, which I absolutely love. 
but I thought three snowflakes would be a little bit too much. So I'm just using two snowflakes and my third element for my card, because I like to work in threes, is going to be my sentiment. So I'm adding these to my card with some of the Connect glue. And I do like to have things kind of hanging off the edge of the card. But being I didn't want to waste any of this foil, I didn't have it hang off too much. Then I can add my sentiment strip that I had already heat embossed. And this is on the red velvet cardstock as well. And a sentiment from that Sparkle and Shine stamp set. So I just put some foam squares behind there to pop that up. And I'm going to add a couple rhinestones right to the center of my snowflakes using the Connect glue. Now I had those extra snowflakes that I had showed you earlier that I had die cut out and I really wanted to make something with them. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you one of them and how I put it together and an example of a third one that I created because I was having just way too much fun. Now my third original card that I'm going to show you is a little bit on the softer side. This time I'm using the festive stencil from the kit. So also using a piece of sea glass cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm gonna attach this to my stencil just using some purple tape, adhering that from the back. Then after I flip this over, I'm going to ink blend on some tranquil teal. Now this is pretty dark compared to the sea glass cardstock. So I'm just gonna be really careful and light handed about how I apply this ink. Now I'll make a confession. The cardstock, it could be sea glass, it could be turquoise sea. I honestly get the two mixed up and confused sometimes, but either one of those light colors would work. Now here's a look at the highly anticipated Master Layouts 3. This works really well with the wreath builder cards that you create. I really like that circle with the stitched edge. So I'm going to die cut a white circle from that. And then I'm also going to use these flock transfer sheets. And this is in the white latte, I think it's called. And I'm going to die cut out one of my snowflakes from that white flock. And this just gives a really soft feel compared to the last card that I just did. It's just very soft, very delicate. I also had die cut out three more snowflakes the same size from white cardstock and layered them together and added to that white circle. So that just gives it a little bit of dimension. I do want to also note that that Master Layouts 3 die set, it is not part of the kit. It is sold separately, so you can purchase that without doing the kit, if that is what you prefer. Now I did trim my ink blended panel down to about 3 and 3 quarters and leaving it at the 5 and a half inches. So I'll have a white border on each side once I complete my card. I lined up my circle about where I would put it on the card so I knew where I could align my sentiment. And then I just stamped that in the obsidian ink. Then I can attach this panel to a piece of heavyweight cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Just using my tape runner to attach that and see it gives me just a really nice white margin on the very edge. I finished this off by adding some foam squares to that circle and adding my snowflake up on top. And then I'll be using some of the clear sequins and I'm going to add three of them right around there. And that'll finish off my third originally planned card. All of them very easy to recreate and three totally different ideas. Now here is an added bonus with those snowflakes that I had left over. So I had some additional ones that I cut from that silver and I decided to add it to a purple background. So I had used a piece of Plum Punch cardstock and I ink blended around it with edible eggplant. And then I also flicked on those perfect pearls again for those snowflakes. And on the Sparkle and Shine stamp set are these little snowflakes. Now these are great for wreath building, but an idea I had after this fact of my first card was using the embossing ink and the comfort blocks and just stamping these onto my background. So it's adding a little bit of interest to the background without getting too carried away with the snowflakes. So there are a few different designs and I just clean them in between. I'm stamping them in kind of a visual triangle just to kind of scatter them around my background. Some of them I will stamp off on the edge. And then after my background is done, one other thing I wanted to show you, which is also one of my favorite things to do for Christmas cards and holiday cards, is I stamped a sentiment onto the silver cardstock that Gina carries and I stamped it in the embossing ink and I sprinkled on silver embossing powder. This is such an amazing look. 
Then I'm going to finish off my card. So I attach the snowflakes again with the connect glue and I'm adding that sentiment with foam squares right to the flush edge on the left hand side of the card. And that'll finish off the extra card that I did and I'll also also show you what these would look like on red cardstock. So I didn't get a chance to finish this one on camera, but this is how the gold or the red snowflakes would look on a red background. And I will have some completed projects to show you here at the end. I will have all of the supplies that I used in today's video listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. And I will have a ton more inspiration listed on my blog as well using other stamp sets and dies from the Gina Key release. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite card was out of today's video. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.